Well, I'm really happy to see everybody here joining us today. Uh, welcome to Mastrius, and this is our Meet the Mentor with Lucy McCann. Um, Lucy is a wonderful fine artist uh, joining us from uh, her studio in Australia. And some of the things we're going to talk about today is um, things I wish I'd been told at the beginning of my art journey. Um, Lucy believes everyone has something to say with paint. If you can draw, you can paint. And she's going to talk about brush mileage and how she got it with postcards. And she will be explaining what all that means a little bit later in the session. Um, welcome, Anae. I'm so glad to see you. Anae's joining us from Alberta as well. Anae, where, where are you? Uh, in Lethbridge, Alberta. Lethbridge, Alberta. Yep. Nice to have you here with us. Happy to be here. Thank you, Lynn. Great to meet you, Lucy. Hi, Anae. Great to meet you too. It's nice to put a face to our conversations. It is, isn't it? It makes it so much better. Yes. Um, I'm just going to read a little bit of an introduction about Lucy, who is, by the way, a multimedia artist. She works in oil, watercolor, acrylic, graphite, mixed media, and sculpture. So I think she's touched a little bit of everything. Uh, Lucy was born in Armadale, Australia in 1958 and studied fashion and dress design at the National Art School, which gave her the grounding in draftsmanship and design. She won a scholarship to model with June Dally Watkins and continued to model with the agency while designing clothing and accessories with the fashion design label Q. At this time, Lucy was asked to design images of Australian themes for sloppy joes and sand shoes. So the study of screen printing was undertaken also at the National Arts School. She's taught art in Australia, New Zealand, Italy, and London. Lucy now art facilitates for groups from New England Regional Art Museum. And together with her husband, Barry McCann, they run the McCann Fine Art and Teach in two studio spaces on their property in Armadale, Australia. Welcome, Lucy. We're so happy to have you here and to um, hear about you, your art journey and your mentorship. Thank you, Lynn. What a lovely introduction. Sometimes I think you can take on too many art journeys, and perhaps I've done that, but it's the way I'm wired. So I like all the mediums, and I especially love my shed where I do my sculpture. In some ways, it might be nice to hone in on one journey, but just depends how you feel and how you want to attack your art journey. Um, I, I think we were talking about this a little bit earlier that um, all of us with an artistic bent, um, we like to have our fingers in multiple things, not just paint and brushes and canvas. So I, I'm excited that you have so much experience in so many different areas. And that's really nice of you to say too, Lynn, and the brush, the brush strokes and the brush mileage, which I'll talk about in a moment, is certainly better for me than my computer skills. So Lynn is helping me and then Debbie will be helping me later in this mentoring journey. Um, let's talk about brush mileage first. When I first met Lynn, she didn't know what it was. So in Australia, I think Mavis would understand, it's the amount of time that you've either got a pencil or a paintbrush in your hand because any one of us here can hold each other's hands and we can paint, but unless you actually put the effort and the brush strokes in, you're not actually going to reach a point that you're happy with and that's when disappointment sets in. So coming from a traditional background where I had to learn to draw because I came from an accountancy firm and then Barry and I decided that we'd change our jobs 
And so Barry taught me to draw. And I know for a fact that you can do that if you do a little bit every day in your journal, write down how long you were painting for, write down the date. Within six months, you'll actually see quite a big improvement. And it's just the muscle in your brain that gets good at distances and angles. So for me, being a traditionalist, I did need to know a little bit about drawing. Uh, Lynn and I were talking before, I have gone on and one of my joys now is going and finding what medium I'm going to do in the studio. So I don't think it matters how you're wired, whether you want to be abstract, whether you want to do traditional work, the capability of being able to draw something quickly and well is a plus. I don't, I don't mind what it is, but it's a plus. So now to get my brush mileage coming from the accountancy firm, I had 117, when I decided to resign, I had 117 postcards to do for my clients to say I was leaving. So that started the journey of the postcards. So I'll just share my screen with you because being aesthetic people, we like to look at things as well as listen to me chatting. Okay, so this is, uh, can you see that, Lynn? We can see it perfectly. Good. So this is the little backpack that I have because I can't carry my big easel uh, for 10Ks, for instance. So this backpack is 1.5 kilos when it's full and it goes on my back as it says. And you'll probably laugh when you see the cash and the card in one section in this screen. <laughs> I do have sunscreen and I do have tissue and I do have a pencil, <laughs> but the cash and the little card was most important, especially in uh, Italy, because we'd gone and I'd done a little painting outside and it was not very good. And so I thought, right, well, I'll go to the pub and I'll have a drink. So hence, that's why I have the cash in there in, <laughs> in case I need, in case I need to be uh, a little bit <laughs> refreshed. So that's, that's the front of the backpack, a pencil, sunscreen, tissues. And then the back of the middle of the pack, which is the back pocket in this screen, as my sketch journals, I have two because I like to put the little black one in my handbag because it's it's with me all the time. You'll be surprised how often you're sitting somewhere and you could do a little sketch, might have taken your dad to the doctor or you might be at the coffee shop. Very interesting how often you might be able to scratch, sketch. Then I have my watercolour kit, which has my nine colours and white. In this instance, I'm fibbing because this is my Central Australia kit and it's got a couple more colours than it should have. I have a little piece of hard cardboard. I have torn up watercolour paper that's the size of my envelopes. I tape my watercolour paper to my cardboard. And then I have travel brushes, water and a washer because I'm lucky enough that I can paint while Barry's driving. So I paint at any opportunity I get. When I grab that backpack, it's always fully loaded, fully ready, and I can do any number of paintings as soon as I grab that if we're leaving quickly. So I think that's essential to have. There's no excuses then because you can't not grab that and fit it somewhere and at least do a sketch. So I'll then go on to sketches. Please stop me if I'm um, going too fast, but these will be up anyway, I think Lynn said, we'll be able to see them. So this one is from, I have to look at my reference here, my photos. Um, this one is from, hmm, doesn't matter where it's from, can't actually see it. Um, <laughs> Each time that I did a postcard or a sketch, I sent them all home to my family. So they kept them for me. And I've actually done, I don't know, hundreds, probably probably thousands of these little postcards. Some are very not detailed. Some are very freeform. 
and some are detail. So each of these, I'll just flick through. Um, I have obviously had more time to be in the pub in this one because I've done a little indoor scene. But each of these quickly takes me back somewhere. They're beautiful. They're absolutely beautiful. And they're just postcard size, like three by yeah. five, I think is postcard size. Um, and I've found that I've, I've torn the watercolour paper to fit it into that um, envelope, wherever you are in the world. And I've also bought stamps because sometimes you find you're in a spot where you can't buy the stamps. Um, so it's sensible to be organised. I think a watercolourist has to be organised anyway. I definitely know that where that one is. It's Italy because we taught there at a little place called Elboro and it was a medieval uh, village. And I think the beauty of these little postcards is that each of these now give me a quick memory and feel of where I was. So London, I actually should have painted Barry in London because we were under the tube and we came up and our first vision of London was Eros, which is the bottom little postcard. And I honestly thought he was going to jump out of his skin. He was so excited to be there, so <laughs> excited to see the red buses. The camera was going and, yes, it was, it was just beautiful. But each of these bring back little memories. Oh, there we are. There I was in the pub in London doing a little painting. So I think also keep your camera with you on oh, Marrakesh, Morocco, just beautiful, all the lilies and all their blues. I think keep a camera with you because then you can record as well as trying to do a little postcard. You can see the little lily on the left here in this card. I did one on the front, one on the back and folded the card to send it to mum and dad. This is at Shivani where I bought in Mono's garden where I bought a little cup. So it's it's nice to have these memories. They just immediately take you back to where you were. So the advantage of all these little postcards for me, Prague, was that I was learning about colour. I didn't know I was and I didn't know I was getting faster and faster at what I was doing. But each of these pencil ske sketches and the watercolours taught me about colour. And that's the second thing that I think is part of your brush mileage, part of your journey. Colour is probably the hardest, in my opinion, one of the hardest things to learn. You can have so many pigments, so many colours, and how do I mix them all to get what I want instead of being disappointed? So on my first journey of fashion, when I was designing clothes, I was able to put colour together. So I think one little hint I can give everybody here is, and perhaps I'll stop screen sharing. One hint here is that um, the amount of time you put into something is the reward for effort. We all have to put it in and then we get the reward and it doesn't come immediately. Barry and I have changed our jobs for 23 years now. Um, and so a lot of that was very, very disciplined when we changed our jobs, that we'd come into the studio and we'd learn something. And in the beginning, I just put three colours together, three staining colours together, worked on them. Then three opaque colours together, worked on them. Then three semi-transparent colours together, worked on them. So I think what I'm trying to say is make it small bites. We can't all know value, colour, shape and edge, which is what goes through my brain when I'm working. Value, colour, shape and edge. Every artist will have different things in their heads, um, but I think that if you have something that you can work on and enhance the rest, that's how you get ahead. But for me, I'm still doing postcards um, and they just put in the chat that they are really beautiful, Lucy. Oh, book. thank you. Thank you. I have piles and piles. And in fact, that's often what the kids come home to look at because that tells them where I'm at in my art journey. 
It might be portraits one time, it might, might be Central Australia another time, might be London. It just depends. It, it always tells them. And it, I have to say, if I'm not in the studio, I'm in the shed because Barry has the kitchen because he's a chef and I have the shed. And that's where all my angle grinders and polishers and everything are. <laughs> For your sculpting. For my sculpting, okay. yes. yes. Um, I have a question about um, you mentioned how um, early in your career when you were in fashion you learned color through through fashion and I find it funny that in in our minds mine anyway you compartmentalize and you don't think about when you put together your wardrobe and you get dressed during the day you're actually putting together color can you speak to that a little bit about fashion and color and design and pattern and I can. I can, Lynn, and I love the question. Thank you. Because it links so hand in hand with art. And I'll, I'll clarify that by saying as soon as I get 16 or 20 students into my classroom, as soon as they walk in the door, I can tell if they're going to be value or tonalists or they're going to be colorists simply because of what they've got on. So tonalists will always be harmonious and close together on the on the color wheel, and they'll quite often be quite wide out on the color wheel. So lots of browns and grays. So when I was doing fashion, and I'm a colorist, I can tell you straight up. Barry and I have arm wrestles because he likes he thinks value is the most important. And I have to agree with that because we could watch a black and white TV and we'd still know the, the journey and the movie and we'd laugh in the right places. But as soon as we add color, then we get that emotion. So when you're doing work with materials, I guess the best way to describe it, Lynn, is that if you overwhelm with materials and color, then the garment is not going to speak for itself. If it should be quite simple and perhaps border on the tonal side of things. So just to clarify that as well, for me, value is black or white and anything in between. And tone is the color in the black or white. And then there's color, which is temperature. Okay. Um, Does that answer that? Yes, on so many levels. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Um Yes, I just find it ironic that I've 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 met people who say they're not artistic at all, but they're beautifully dressed in in beautiful clothes that are color coordinated, and that's all I that's all artistic in my opinion. It definitely it definitely is artistic, yes. And I think the easiest way to think about it is if you've just got your house, and it doesn't have its curtains or its blinds up yet. It's not quite dressed. It's not quite finished. And then some like to put on makeup and earrings. So that's that's the total finish then. Can I just share screen with you again? I just wanted to talk about a couple of um, paintings because it does it does show my journey from uh, from beginning to end. But this one's kind of in the middle, and I put it there for a reason because I think it's very interesting. In the big, these are kookaburras and we have them in Australia. In the beginning of my art journey, I had to learn to draw. And at that stage, I was left handed. I now paint right handed. But this, this piece of work is done with both hands one pen in my left and one in my right. And I've never done it again because I, it scared me so much because my hands work independently of each other. Oh, my goodness. So I, I can be drawing one section and then do the other section and they don't overlap each other. They, they are totally independent. So I find that fascinating. And my reason for putting that one on there is because I really think you should be trying both hands doesn't matter if one's messy and one's not. Um, it's just really interesting, the marks that you make. 
And let's face it, the marks that you make are your marks. They're the ones that are going to give you your style. They're the ones that become your passion. They're also the ones that sign your check. Well, we don't have checks anymore, do we? <laughs> but we used to. So I just think try all sorts of different things. And in this, in my case, I love to use both hands, not together anymore, but independently, separately. So I just thought you might find that one interesting. So that was the start, my drawing and then adding a little bit of colour to it. And I still love doing those today. The daffodils are out at the moment and I've got a big, long panoramic of graphite daffodils and then colour in the centre. Beautiful. Oh. Sorry, Lynn, did you want to say something? No, I'm just admiring. Okay. Now, this was my first portrait in 1990 of my dad's mother. You can see, well, it is in watercolour. That's what I learned first, and I'm pleased I learned watercolour because I do think she takes you on a different journey than any of the others. She has to be planned because she's not quite as forgiving as the others where you can scrape it off or you have white paint. But this watercolour in 1990, you can see it's a little bit pale. It doesn't have much form on the face and it doesn't have much in the clothes and it's fairly washed out. So you've got to think now that that's 18 years, 18 years ago. That's not true. This was done in 1990. Then 18 years on, this is dad and he's behind me as well. You can see in the 18 years, my growth. This one's an oil now because I did 10 years of watercolour, five years of four or five years of oil. Part of that was learning about the colours, the pigments, and then five years of acrylic. And I'm still doing acrylic, but I'm always lured back to watercolour. So this one's an oil, and you can see now how much more form, detail, what my observation skills have become. And to simplify that, I always put that into you need to observe you need to interpret and you need to record. And you need to do that even if you're doing mixed media or even if you're doing abstract, observe, interpret, record. So these are the little sayings that go through my brain. Um, I'm hoping they're helpful for other people because if you can have a mantra that you stick to, you do grow. And the last one that I'll share and then I'll, stop sharing. Um, this one, I actually kept this painting. The interest in this painting is that it took me to Shenzhen in China. To begin this story, though, I did, or oh, you just have a look at the painting and then I'll stop sharing screen. It's a watercolour. I did 24 full sheet watercolours without masking fluid, without white paint. The white in these paintings is the watercolour paper, so I had to bring my wash around them, which is quite a, a timing to get in watercolour. So I'll just let you see that and I'll, I'll stop sharing now and I can talk. Um, I did 24 of those to get into four, well, I was hoping to get into four competitions all, all in China. Barry then helped me choose the four that we thought were the best of the 24. And I do have to say that I was very fortunate to get into all four competitions. But the little painting, thank you, the little painting that you just looked at, well, it's not little, it's a full sheet, 57 by 76 centimetres. It, there was 12,000 entries, 54 countries and three Australians. And they, they took up the three Australians and our partners over there. That was so exciting but so humbling because when you look at your painting hanging with all those Asians, Chinese, who are so disciplined at watercolour, you just have to stand by it and be proud and then think, okay, what can I do now to make 
my uh, journey more successful. And luckily at that stage, a friend called Robert Wade, he's probably our best watercolorist here in Australia. He's getting elderly now and has a bit of dementia, but he said, don't sell any of your works that get you on your art journey. So I did save that one. The other three in the competitions sold because I didn't think about it, didn't know about it. Um, but that one I do have on my wall. So that's um, that's a little bit about my art journey. Now, is there any questions I can answer? I have a question. Yes. Um, so what do you think, do you have a plan for your, for the mentorship, like of what you plan on doing? Is it going to be based upon watercolor? Is it going to be based upon acrylic or a specific, um, I'll let you answer. Good question, Debbie. I would like to think that I'll demonstrate if need be in watercolour because it's it's my natural genre and it's quick drying and it's easy to demonstrate in. But I would, my strength, I guess, is that I work with disability people um, out of the art gallery and the ability to communicate with them when they're all nonverbal is a huge learning. It was a huge learning curve. I've been with the, them now, I have 23 in two different sessions. The communication of body language is, is great. And then me looking at their work and then my group's work will give me my stepping off board as how as I can help. Because I've found with the mentoring that we've done and the group sessions we do here face to face, it was a little, a little more about me as the teacher and demonstrating. Whereas now I think it's really about helping you, for instance, or the particular person on their journey, because that's when you get growth. And that's why if you do your homework, you'll get lots of growth. We actually proved that when we had COVID and we had to go on to Zoom sessions and we had six people come on at a time and there and they would meet, we were meeting once a week and occasionally they couldn't do homework because life comes into things. But their growth in the six months was amazing. Wonderful. So I'm hoping to really help the person having a stepping off point, perhaps even them e emailing me some images of their work, because as soon as I can see that, I'll know where I can help. But Debbie, basically I will still work with value, colour, shape and edge because that's a good spot to start. We can all talk the same language. And then after that, it's just, is it dark enough, light enough, which is value, warm enough, cool enough? which is temperature, and is the shape and the edge right? And they're very personal. I found over my art journey, the more edges I lose, the more the, the judge or the viewer will stay in my painting. But if you're botanical, that's not wrong. That just means you want to do every edge tight. Thank you. And then, Lynn, I guess we just need to talk about when I'm launching on the 6th of September. Yes, your mentorship starts on the 5th of September in North America, the first Tuesday of every month, or the 6th of September in Australia, the first Wednesday of every month. And in North America, it's uh, Tuesdays at 5 p.m. Mountain Time. In uh, Australia, it's Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Australia time. And that it's great. great. You're, you're able to straddle two continents. That's wonderful. <laughs> well, that was my excitement. I'm just hoping to, to see the rest of the art world, what everyone's doing, because you work in your studio and it's fantastic having Barry because he'll walk past, for instance, when I was doing Dad behind me, he walked past and said, oh, what you do the nose like that for? I thought, you know, I've just been working on it for six hours and that's what's wrong and I didn't see it. <laughs> we, um, Debbie, you're laughing there, I can see that. We are a bit more diplomatic now because he says to me, 
how far through the painting are you? Yeah, because I was just thinking if my husband had come and said something like that to me six hours after I had been working on something, I think I would not have been that appreciative. <laughs> well, he's the one who sees things just so immediately yeah. <laughs> that it's such, such a benefit. It's amazing to be able to, to have him. But, yes, we're very diplomatic now. How far through the painting are you? <laughs> Now it's better than I liked it better before. <laughs> <laughs> well, there again, Anae, we can see with body language what each other means. <laughs> right. Um, Lucy, um, what is your favorite thing about mentoring students and helping them? Being able to help people. That's just in me. I'm definitely unruffle the feathers person because in any art journey there is times in any day when you hit a brick wall in that painting and you think I can't do this I can't draw I can't get the colors right no. that's when you have to push through that's where I'll right be right behind you because as soon as you push through that that's the disappointment part as soon as you push through that then you'll find that you're getting reward for effort. We still might not get a painting that is to our expectations, but that will be a learning painting. And still to this day, Barry and I have never got one that we've been entirely happy with. There's always something we can do better. I'm sorry to hear that. I was really hoping <laughs> one day I would, it would be perfect. I would be, it would be there. No, but Lynn, think on the other side of that. If you find one that you've done so well, you might go, oh, well, that's done. But I get up each day and think, what medium am I going to use to get the best work I can today? So I'm, I'm spurred on. Great. Great way to look at it. I like that. I'm going to I'm going to absorb that. So um, in your in your group, are you um like I know for those that don't know how mentorship group uh, groups go, like it's not like a a course or a workshop. It's a lot more live and interactive, which is fantastic. And I mean, Lynn and I have actually known each other for quite a while, and we're in a mentorship group where we both almost joined Masterius at the same time, and it's been pretty phenomenal to be able to. Learn from artists that I didn't even know existed, which is, and, yeah, amazing. Um, and I think, I think that's it. Mm -hmm. Something new, someone new. Yeah, so um, I know, like, it sounds like for sure you'll incorporate that component of um, critiquing and looking at people's work and then doing some new, new teaching as well. So that's something you can expect as well. Um, anything else that you want to make sure you incorporate in your mentorship? Yes, um, the the ability of living with somebody who's very good at photography means that we can set up our sessions either or of either either of us. Um, and when we've been mentoring here, we've been able to set up a camera on the palette, a camera on the work, a camera on me, and a camera on the reference, and then switch between. So everybody can see exactly what's happening. And so if we're demonstrating, I'm hoping that the visual of being able to see what's happening, the mark making, I keep going back to that, but it is your mark making. And then with watercolour, it's timing as well. As soon as you can see those and the reference and what we're doing, that so far has proved to be very helpful. So I have, sort of Sorry, yeah. Go ahead, Lynn. I was just going to say I have found the critiquing portion of the mentorship very um, helpful in uh, helping to fast forward my particular art career, um, and the fact that the mentor talks to me specifically, not just the class in general, but specifically looking at my work and telling me where I can improve, what I'm doing well, um, what I can focus on better. Um, I, I really, really enjoy that part of the mentorship, as well as always the live demos. Those are the best. 
<laughs> well, I also think, um, and I, in answer to your question and then adding to Lynn's there, it's interesting that I found doing these Zoom sessions because I was, a, I was in love with face-to-face -face because I think you need to see people. But the Zoom sessions are more precise. They bring you straight to your work. The face-to-face -face are a little more social and you might have a cup of tea and a morning tea and that's nice too. But the Zooms just pinpoint down onto your art what you need to be doing, and then you have to do your homework because without you doing the brush mileage, back to that brush mileage, then you, you it, no matter how much I give you and no matter how much Lynn gives somebody or Debbie gives someone or, or Mavis gives someone, unless you are doing that mark making, you're not actually going to get reward for effort. Mm -hmm. And the faster you do it, the faster you get reward for effort. And that, that's the great thing about mentorship is that it's 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 progressive with what each artist needs. It's not like, now you've taken your workshop, now go to it and see you later, right? And that's exactly what we were finding, Anna. We'd have people come three monthly or six monthly, but they hadn't painted in between. Mm -hmm. So I think when you come onto a Zoom with Masteries, you are dedicating yourself. You are passionate about getting to another level in your art. And it was really interesting too, this is a bit off topic, but it was interesting in our Zoom sessions that in the end of six, we had a couple that were wanting to paint and they'd got to portraits. One wanted to do exhibitions, wanted to get to the stage where they could exhibit. Um, one wanted to do competitions and one wanted to learn how to put a book together, illustrate a book. And luckily I've done that. So it was very interesting all how we could help people. Oh, and one wanted to do photography and, and Barry's, Barry can do that. So I, that's where I think it's great when you get your group and you start talking to the actual person, that's when I feel I can help. Yeah, I love that. It's individualised and personalised to you. Yeah, And to them. Yeah, yeah. And um, something that hasn't come up was that on our art journeys, I don't know about all of you, but it's a very solitary kind of journey, especially if you don't have a partner that you're doing art with side by side. And in the mentorship, um, the groups are, are small and we really get to know each other and connect. And um, you don't feel so alone. And you feel more focused, or I did. I, I really felt like I, I had a focus now. I had, you know, my, my, my monthly mentorship meeting, homework to get done, um, my mid-month meeting with my group so we could talk about and keep you accountable. Or have you done your homework yet? Have you done your exercises? Um, and it's made a huge difference in um, how much I work in my studio every day now. Um, I really I enjoy that. I can put one word on that. It doesn't ma matter if I'm the mentor in this group. It means that all of us have to keep each other inspired. Inspired, yes. That. Um, if you would like to see more of Lucy's work, I'm putting a link to her art website in the chat. Um, that's where she says her most current work is and also her she and Barry um, have a website that they teach from and um, I'm just going to put that in the chat and there's a tab on there with teaching videos mm -hmm. um, that you can go and see uh, Lucy in action <laughs> And Lynn, that came up twice as lucymccann.com.au. The, oh, second, the second one is mccannfineart.net.au. Okay. And that's the one that has videos. Some are for sale, but a lot are for free. And one of those Barry's done on tone. So it's a really good one to look at. <laughs> oh, for some reason it keeps coming up as Lucy. Okay. I'll just type in here. It's mccannfineart.net.au. 
Yes, .net.au, yes. Yes, that's it. And then go to the menu at the top because there's, uh, in artworks, if you want to go to that, you'll find artworks, but you'll also find another little tab with sculptures. So if you want to, to have a look at the sculptures, they're there. But under videos is where the video, you'll find the videos. Awesome. Well, Irene, have you finished your meal? <laughs> <laughs> She's probably gone to bed now. <laughs> Hello, Irene. I, I was going to say, Irene and Mavis, do you have any questions at all? Like, I know Debbie kind of introduced herself. She's going to be the navigator for Lucy, who is an also, uh, what a navigator is, is an artist who's also being mentored by the mentor, but she helps facilitate the session and make sure that all the mentees are um, on the learning trajectory that they want to be on and they're getting their questions answered and all that. But yeah, Mavis and Irene, if you have questions, please go right ahead. Um, look, I, I really have no idea how this works. You know, um, do we pay a membership or, you know, um, I have no idea. I have, question, I have put a link in the chat that takes you right to Lucy's mentorship page. You do pay a monthly <laughs> fee um, and um, it explains it all at masterius.com in, in Lucy's mentorship page, how it works. And you pay a monthly fee. You are a, now a member of Masterius. You get added to the community in the community chat. You have a special page ju if, just for your mentorship with all of your members that are in your group with you. And you meet once a month for two hours with Lucy. And then once a month for one hour with your group, just your group. And uh, where you talk about anything everything from art to supplies to homework to the mentorship to what's going on in your life right now um it's just a wonderful um connection with your group can i so it's a set that? it's a set time all the time all the time so lucy's would be for you the first wednesday of every month at 9 a.m australia time right. till 11 a.m mavis and 9 till 11 I just want to add 11. something to that. Okay. I want to add something to that that I I I really appreciate about Mastrius because I am being mentored by somebody else. And one of the things I love about Mastrius, and there's a lot to love, is that um, you get as when you have a mentorship, you get uh, to attend um, these events that are weekly. And sometimes it's to see an artist that paints, does a demonstration. Sometimes it's to, um, it's an event where the artist paints and then you paint your version of it and you meet a week later to just show everybody. So that's like really fun. I love that about, I love everything. I think I love meeting with a mentor. I love attending these, these events. There's a lot of them. It's really interesting. But okay. Mavis, you, you, you can go on and choose uh, Ma Masters will send you a chat and you can go and choose which what you'd like to go on and what you wouldn't but there's lots and lots of tutors and lots of lots of, of support with other events other than just our mentoring oh thank you Lucy yeah so we actually paint with you you know like do you demonstrate and we paint in that two hours not like our not like our step no. by steps were. You can have a painting that you want help with, or or I can set your homework that you do a painting. Yes, if you're not sure what you'd like oh, to paint. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But it's it's more about now taking you if you want to do flowers at the moment and you're struggling with the background. That's where I can help. Oh, okay. Thank you. So so your flowers are all out coming out in bloom, your beautiful um, uh, bulbs. It just makes me so happy there. All the daffodils and magnolias are just beautiful. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, I've actually been to Lucy's studio and did a school with her. Yeah, it's beautiful. No, oh, you are so fortunate, Mavis, that you are able to do that. We and we're so fortunate that we can access her through through this international 
platform, Matrius, and through Zoom. I'm really excited about that. Yes, that's great. Uh, and he has put a whole bunch of information in the chat about what exactly or some of the things your Mastrius mentorship will get you um, or your membership in Mastrius. And I've put a link to Mastrius.com, which explains it very, very well. Um, Mavis, can I ask, are you okay with that? You can see your chat and... Um, no, I'm, I'm very ignorant as far as um, technology is concerned. <laughs> okay, well, maybe there is some help. So you have a navigator that can help you with that technology piece and show you around. Um, but I, what I put is basically what you get out of your monthly mentorship is you get two hours with your mentor. You get an hour mid-month with your navigator and other group members. It's an opportunity to build that community. One thing that I, I knew I needed to uh, improve my art skills, and that's why I came to Masterist, but what I didn't realize I also needed was a supportive community, and I definitely have found that. Um, each session has um, an opportunity to look at homework, do burning questions, um, have um, new learning, so that might be a, a demo or a different topic of learning. And then um, Lucy will assign homework each each month. And homework is, of course, optional. But um, the nice thing oh, is- not an A. <laughs> depending on your mentor. But um, I mean, I was just going to say, you'll get more out of it if you do your homework. Um, and yeah, you know, your group members are there to support you along the way and help give you advice as well um and uh, the nice thing about it it's a monthly subscription so you can join or leave at any time and like debbie said you get access to um weekly uh, panels that we do so that you can access the recording for one week after they pat have them because i know you're in australia so i'm not sure i know they're usually at 5 p.m on thursday nights here um, but they're all on different topics. Sometimes they're on artist mindsets. Sometimes they're a uh, painting demo. Um, they're super valuable and, and wonderful. Um, and then what else? So if you go to masters.com, we'll actually talk, show you kind of the journey and how to join a group and what it means. But just know there's lots of support when it comes to the technology types of things. And your navigator can help make sure that you get to your session <laughs> each oh, month okay. to the right place. Um, you'll get access to a private chat group with uh, your group as well. So you'll be able to communicate with your group members through a private chat and share um, images that you're working on throughout the month. Um, so yeah, it's it's kind of, it's responsive. It's responsive to what you need, not just I've signed up for this workshop and that's what I'm going to learn. It's, you know, Lucy might demo on one thing and you don't have to do the same painting as her. You could do something completely different and then get feedback on it of where you want to go with your art so okay. or in whatever medium okay. you want to work in you don't have to work in the same medium as the artist so right thank you You're thank you you can always phone a friend mavis if you need to call me <laughs> oh thank you thank you lucy <laughs> uh, irene did you have any questions Oh, hi. Um, no, I uh, I don't. Uh, the group that I was in is just uh, just ending. And uh, due to health reasons, I uh, I can't join another one right now. So I'm hoping to take in more of these kinds of events to learn about different mentors. And I've really enjoyed this today, Lucy. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Irene. What do you normally paint in? Uh, acrylics and mixed media. Okay. Good. Watercolor is too hard. I started in watercolor. <laughs> I can answer that. I think when I'm queen of the country and Barry's king, we're going to rewrite the book because it doesn't matter if you make mud. It's not a one-hit wonder. There are no rules. It, you, you just have to think of a solution for watercolor. Plan a little bit. And really, the only planning is how you're going to save the white, the white of the paper. We are allowed to use white paint, but it's never as nice as the white of the paper. So if you plan how you're going to save the white of the paper, then it's just a matter of doing your homework because it's the timing. 
would love that. Lucy, thank you so much for this. Um, are there any last words you want to leave us with before we wrap up? Happy painting. Happy painting. Thank awesome. You. Thanks, I want to Lucy. Thank everyone for joining us. And I want to especially give thanks to Ine and Debbie for asking all the questions and answering all the questions that I didn't have all the information for. Thank you so much. Oh. Thank you for a great job hosting, Lynn. And thank you, Lucy. It was really nice to see all your beautiful work. Yeah. Oh, I'm thank really you. Impressed. I'm really impressed. Lucy, um, I sent you an email just you, when you have the chance to reply, when you want to get together and, and discuss how we're going to, we have to try to market this uh, to try to get more members to our group. Yes. So, yes. So let me know. Thank you. I did get that, Deb Debbie, and just when I got up this morning. So that's it's always a bit exciting for us in Australia because we wake up and get all the emails and the chats and things. So I didn't even know that I was going to meet you until today. Okay, wonderful. So, um, Mavis, Debbie is going to be my navigator and my help. So she will be doing, yes, she will be in our group. I'm so excited. Oh, I watched a YouTube video of you, Lucy. You were painting uh, seagulls on a beach and you painted those those uh, fluid figures. I loved it. That's what made me decide to, to uh, be your navigator. I thought it was just amazing to watch you in action. So I'm very excited. I, I, I think anybody who's going to be part of this group is going to be very lucky. Yes, I agree. Thank yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Debbie. Can I just add there and can I call Barry in? And I'm just joking, but I'd like to call him in and you say that again because he roused on me because all the angles he had to get the cameras <laughs> because it was so big. And and he, he often says that I'm I'm a bit like busy all around in a bottle. <laughs> and he said he just struggled to film film me. Okay, but he well, did a good job, didn't he? He edited that. He did he a great job. It. And if ever I meet Barry, I will mention this. I'll remember this and I'll good. mention it. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. He's, actually, he's actually just editing one at the moment. Okay. So that'll, that'll be good. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Lynn. You're so welcome. Thank you, everybody. And that's a wrap. We are Thank done. You Thank you so much. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Have a good day. Have a good day. You too. Bye. Bye. Bye.